Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys. I received this message from our dear brother who sounds to be so bitter. Then the message that he sent to me, we then had to do a translation of that message that he sent to me. The message reads like this. Hello, my brother. How are you? I am a man who is from Zimbabwe, but currently I am staying in a foreign land. I have a very dark family secret that I want to share with you. When we did all of these things that we did, it is not because we are people who are evil-hearted, but it was because there was a nasty fight that was going on. This nasty fight, it is still going on. It is between my family and our in-law who was in a relationship with my late sister. This fight is still going on. It was about who is the one that has the right to be given the money, that money that is paid for the lobola, the bright price for my sister's daughter. What happened is that my sister, my late sister, she was dating this man who was a married man after they had started dating, that was when my sister fell pregnant. After she had fallen pregnant, she then gave birth to a baby girl. But unfortunately, my late sister died when her daughter was only around five months old. Then this burden of looking after this baby was placed on our mother. And this is how my late sister died. After she had fallen pregnant, then that man started to treat her very badly. Then my sister started to suffer from that disease called high blood pressure. By the time of her death, my sister, she had a swollen face and her hands were swollen all over, including her feet. That is how my sister died. Then after the funeral, our in-law then refused to take care of his daughter, claiming that he was not the father. Then he said that if he was going to take care of this baby, this was going to affect his marriage that he had with his first wife. So he decided to dump the baby at our mother's house. Then he left and he never came back to check on his daughter again. So growing up, we were the ones who were looking after our late sister's child. And when this daughter of our late sister was all matured, she then decided to go to the capital city. Once she had arrived in the capital city, she found a job, but she was working for this family. And in that family, there was this woman who was really kind hearted towards our late sister's daughter who then told her that they were relocating to Australia or Canada. I am not sure. But that woman then said to our late sister's daughter that before they could travel to wherever they were going, they were going to assist her to get a passport. Then they made some plans so that our late sister's daughter can travel to South Africa where some of that woman's family is located and they seem to be people who are in the upper class. Mind you, in all of this, our late sister's daughter, she was the one who used to take care of us before she had left Zim when she was still working there in Zim. But when she came to South Africa, she continued looking after our mother and taking care of us. But when she saw that she was now dating that woman's relative, the one who is overseas, and it seems as if this man that she is now staying with, the man, he has a lot of money. She then chose to abandon us just like her father did. All of a sudden, we stopped receiving groceries and money from South Africa like we used to do because she used to assist us a lot. Little did we know that she had met her father's relatives on Facebook and decided to speak with her father's relatives who later gave her her father's contacts. And now they are in very good communication and it seems as if we are now the bad people in everything that is happening but she forgot that we were the ones that raised her up and it was not an easy 
and looking at the family from where we come from, it is just poverty. So raising our late sister's daughter, it took a lot of sacrifices, but all of these things, she is not putting them into consideration. Her fiancé then reached out to us about the Lobola negotiations up that were supposed to happen. We then told them that it was good that they were ready to pay for the bride price, but they should know that the money should come straight to us, not the way that they had planned that the money that they wanted to pay for the bride price will be taken to her father, who was never present in her life, so we could not reach any agreement. After all the pain that she decided to put us through when she started to go around social media looking for her father who was never there. If her father wanted to look for her, he knew where to find her. But ever since she was born and after her father abandoned her, when she was still five months old, her father turned his back on her and he never looked for her ever in his life. But she went ahead, then she started looking for her father without ever consulting with us. We then had a family meeting and we decided to cast a spell upon her life. So we visited a traditional healer who then told us that his ancestors do not allow him to make charms using the spirit of a dead person but he said that he was going to direct us to another traditional healer who told us that he could perform this ritual that we wanted to be performed on our behalf but he said that he needed to use money that we would have gotten from my late sister's daughter who was in South Africa this money would be so essential for the ritual so we then decided to call this young woman who was there in South Africa and we lied to her. We told her that it was an emergency and her grandmother, my mother, was admitted in the hospital and we needed money urgently and if we were not going to get the money, her grandmother was going to die. So she then said that she was going to speak with her husband after she had spoken with her husband she came back to us and she told her that her husband had given her the money and she was going to send the money to us. Then she sent the money from South Africa to Zim. We collected the money. Then we used the money that she had sent to us for all of the rituals. The way that we performed the rituals was like this. We went back to our village, but we traveled back to our village with that witch doctor after we had paid him for the services. After we had gone back to our village, we went to the place which we used to bury those that die in our family. When we had arrived at the place where we bury our la when we had arrived at the place where we bury our loved ones, we then stood in a circle around my sister's grave. Then the healer told us that all of us we were supposed to pick up soil from our relative's grave in which we did. After we had done that, that traditional healer then told us that we were supposed to stand while it will be facing in the direction where South Africa is, where my late sister's daughter was now residing. And we then were told that we were supposed to command our relative's spirit to rise up from the dead and she was supposed to chase after her daughter and to make sure that she will never find peace in her marriage until the day that she will come back begging for forgiveness. When we did all of these things, my late sister's daughter, she was heavily pregnant and the baby that she was carrying died in her womb. Up until now, she hasn't managed to have another baby because the spirit of her late mother closed up her womb. She is supposed to do all of those things that we asked her to do. If they want to pay for her bride price, they are supposed to come to our village. Then we are the ones that are supposed to call her father since we are the ones that looked after her ever since she was still a little baby. But now she is acting all grown up and she chose to abandon us. You might ask me, why did we do all of these things that you think are very evil? But just ask any woman who knows the pain of raising a child on their own. Then when that child is all mature, then the child chooses to abandon you, then chases after the same father that abandoned her. 
that is the reason why we cursed her because it pains me a lot when I think of how my mother suffered soon after the death of her mother. This daughter of my late sister, when she was still five months, when her mother had passed away, she used to cry a lot, such that my mom would stand all night long just trying to make her stop crying and there was no milk. And my mother used to feed this young woman goat milk because my mother could not afford that powdered milk that is given to babies and now that she is all grown up she has forgotten about every sacrifices that my mother had to do dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to us by one of our dear listeners then we had to do a translation please feel free to write in the comment section your thoughts in your culture in a situation like this who has the right to be given the money when the lobola negotiations are going on is it the grandmother who is supposed to be given this bride price or is it the biological father Strange things do happen in this world.